Good morning, welcome to video number six. Today we're going to cover some very important points about how graphs work and why they work and why they don't work. And you know the mechanics of a graph are fairly simple. I can show you those pretty quick, but understanding this stuff will be what allows you to adapt to different situations and also to figure out what's going wrong if your graphs aren't working. Let's talk about cambial contact. This is all important because we have to have good contact between the cambium of one piece and the cambium of the other piece. What's the cambium? The cambium is where all the magic happens. This is where a tree grows. A tree doesn't grow from the inside and it doesn't grow from the very outside. It grows from this thin line right here, that orange line between the bark and the wood. This is magic. If we look at the cambium layer this way, say this is our wood over here. Oh wait, I drew that wrong color. There we go. We're having technical difficulties. My chalk got wet. <clears throat> okay, so this is our piece of wood. Here's the wood, here's the cambium, here's the bark. The cambium is laying down wood cells on this side and bark cells on that side. At least that's a simple version and the only version I understand and I think the only version that we actually need to understand. So since this is the active growing part, like if you cut a piece of wood, even if I cut a, a piece of wood and store it in the fridge, you'll see that this will start to swell right at the cambium layer because it's trying to grow new cells out and heal this up and it'll start to swell and grow like a ball of new tissue. Sometimes it'll almost cover all the way over, but it comes from that little slice right there. Now the wood doesn't grow, and really the bark doesn't grow, you know, from the outside. It grows from the cambium, laying down bark cells. So then obviously it's important that when we graft something, we want to contact this cambium with that cambium. If I take this piece of wood and could somehow attach this piece of wood to it, seal it all up so there's no moisture loss or anything like that, nothing's going to happen because there's no contact between this cambium and that cambium. If I move that over and line the cambium up right on the edge and just sit this here and screw it and drill it and paint it and make it stay perfectly still and there's good contact, maybe, you know, maybe it would grow. But ideally we have more cambial contact and very close cambial contact and that's really what's going to make our graft be able to heal up and grow. If we make two sloping cuts like this and put them together, then we have a match all along this edge. So another way we can do that is by splitting a piece of stock and peeling the bark back. Now the cambium is still attached to both the bark and the wood in this case. And this only works in the spring. We'll cover this graft in more detail in a bit. And then I can stuff the wedge shaped piece down in here with its cambium cut cambium contacting the edge of the wood where there's still a cambium layer. But also, if I cut the back of this to a little slope or just expose the cambium there too, then I have cambial contact on the bark face as well. You know, I can't contact just wood to wood, just cambium to wood, or just cambium to bark or just bark to bark. It has to be cambium to cambium. So I can't just stick these two together, tie them together and expect them to graft together and grow. Eventually, like very, very long term, they might because they'll just get all smashed and something will happen in there. But usually when you see grafts in the wild, and there actually are a lot of them, at least where I live, what happens is the, the branches will rub together and they'll start to form a wound and eventually that wound exposes the cambium and then they grow together tight enough that it starts to heal and graft. So let's say I could take one piece, strip off the edge, strip off the edge of this one and tie those together. And in some cases you could make that graft work. In fact, I've done that with two trees growing right next to each other. Just cut a strip of bark off of each one, put them together, tie them really tight and eventually they'll graft together. All right, so let's take a look at what can go wrong with the whole process. The first thing is that you can fail to have good cambial contact. So one problem will be that um, if you're trying to make, say, the slope cut, I made that in one pass, and it, you don't have to make it in one pass, but what you do have to do is if you're going to keep cutting it, you can't just whittle randomly and make like little facets all over it. I mean, it can't end up looking 
like this in cross section because then the w pieces of wood will hit but there'll be all these little gaps and the cambium won't touch so the cuts generally need to be very flat so in a way it kind of doesn't matter what's going on with the wood or what it looks like or anything but you really need to make really close contact because if you don't let's say I have a piece that looks um, you know it ends up looking something like this where I'm joining two pieces together and they're not totally flat then they're only going to contact in a couple places and then these are big gaps so when the science starts to heal it's only going to put out these very small very very thin layers of new cells and as you can see if it's only contacting here and here that only does so much if it has really good contact over a large area it actually happens really fast and it doesn't take that many that much new cell growth to get those meshed together and start passing nutrients but if they look like this you know from this this is like looking from the side and there's a bunch of big uh, air gaps in here then those have to slowly fill up with callus tissue which takes a long time and then eventually start to grow so this graft may succeed under certain conditions but the more cambial contact we can get the better so what you want to do is just check your grafts and make sure that there's not big gaps Make sure that if you squeeze it together and tie it really well, you're not gonna have a bunch of space in there. So another thing that can happen is the graft can become dislodged. The cells that are joining these two pieces together within, you know, within a, a week or two, this is probably gonna have some connection between the, the this piece and that piece. But if that gets bumped and moved, it doesn't take much. It's just gonna crack those cells free and then it has to start all over. It'd be like if you had a broken bone and it was starting to heal and then you rebroke it. I mean, you're basically just starting all over again. So we wanna make sure that it doesn't get dislodged by wind, by birds landing on it, or, you know, say, I, I can't tell you how many times I've bumped grafts when I'm out uh, thinning fruits or doing some pruning or checking on trees or whatever I'm doing, you know, working around the trees. But they usually survive because there's things we can do to make sure that it, you know, try to ensure that it doesn't move if it gets bumped. Okay, we can also have bad scions. So this thing, this is just a piece I picked up off the ground. It looks okay. It's still green, but it's a little dried up and desiccated. I can see the bark's kind of wrinkled. Say you get scions from someone in the mail, or they've just been sitting in the fridge for three months. You never know. Sometimes you just get bad scion wood. So one thing you can do is just uh, cut the end off and soak it in a glass of water, and that can help plump it back up because the scion needs enough resources to last until it heals and starts to receive nutrients from the stock. It's actually pretty amazing sometimes if everything else is right how bad of cyan wood you can get away with but it never hurts if you have any doubts. I mean usually it's not necessary but if you have any doubts go ahead and cut the end off and soak it in water overnight. Okay there's numerous things that can go wrong with the weather. One obviously is that this could dry out so if this dries out before it can make a connection and start to receive moisture from the stock then that's a problem. So sun and wind and especially the two combined there's things we can do one is you know i always recommend painting this whole thing pretty much with grafting wax if you have any doubts with easy to graft things it's actually usually not necessary it does really help to seal the end though where it's cut because it loses moisture there faster apples and pears are really pretty forgiving but it's cheap insurance to just paint the whole thing with latex paint or white glue the other thing you can do is shade them. If you only have a few grafts, then you can just take like a branch of a tree, uh, like an evergreen tree, maybe a, a fir tree or a pine or a spruce or something like that. Just cut off a branch and stick it in the ground at an angle to shade the, the graft. I've also put up, you know, shade cloth over long rows to shade them. Again, sometimes it's necessary, sometimes it's not. But if you have warm, sunny weather, hot weather with wind combined that's the worst case scenario. The weather can help uh, heal your grafts or it can retard healing so if it's you know 40 degrees the grafts are going to heal a lot slower than if it's warmer so when the weather starts to warm up in the spring is really a good time to graft because as long as it's not super hot and dry and windy you're going to get healing much much quicker. On the other hand if you graft really early and it's cold the scions aren't likely to dry out so you're you're kind of good either way as long as it's not really hot and windy and dry i'm sure at some point freezing becomes a problem we rarely see temperatures below 20 degrees here but i've 
grafted trees. I mean, I won't hesitate to graft here in February and just, you know, get going on my grafting. I've had trees planted out through multiple hard freezes, just sitting out, you know, grafted but unplanted in the rootstocks, like buried in sawdust or whatever, with, you know, ice forming on the water. It just, if you're grafting into the zone where your trees are starting to push and starting to bloom or look like they're going to bloom, I think you should be just fine. Again, I'm talking about mostly apples and pears because that's my focus and that's what we're focusing on here. But uh, the best thing to do if you think that's going to be a problem is just talk to locals. Find someone local. You don't have to find them local local. You can look on the internet, find someone with a similar climate, find out how they deal with it. People ask me a lot about um, don't you need to heal the grafts first and you know use heat and put them in a greenhouse. Sometimes they do like a, a piece of heating tape with the grafts just laid against the heating tape. So the heat is only heating the graft and it heals faster and then they're planted out later. I don't know about any of that stuff. I don't do any of that stuff. I have, you know, very high success rates grafting and people did that before they had any of that. And obviously if you're grafting onto a full size tree, you can't do anything like that. So um, again, if you think it's a problem, if you have some kind of extreme climate with extreme fluctuations in the spring, Find someone local and ask them. I'm not, I'm not really the person to ask. All right, it's time to graft. In the next video, or maybe two videos, we're gonna look at, you know, we're gonna learn how to use the knife to make the cuts really, you know, I put it that way because that's what's important. It, that's half the battle is just knowing how to use the knife. The grafts themselves are not complicated. They're easy to remember, like how, what they look like and how they work. It's just a matter of being able to execute them well. So yeah, we made it, it's time to graft.